Hi, this is Kay from the Clever Someday blog. Today I'm going to show you how to get a true size cut line for a real world object using Silhouette Studio. Normally in Silhouette Studio you get to pick the size of the designs you're cutting, but sometimes you need to cut a line to match a physical item. One of the most common reasons is to create a cut line to match a rubber stamp, another to place a cut on an acrylic blank, or perhaps you need a replacement gasket for something. Other times you might want to shape as a design aid to coordinate printing with a punch or embossing folder, for instance. Another example would be when you're putting together a jig to hold blanks for engraving, for instance. I've covered some of these other topics before, but I'm actually doing this video as a foundation for a future tutorial on how to build and use a jig, so look for that on the horizon. The first step is to get a good approximation of the shape onto your virtual mat. There are three basic ways to do this by measuring, by scanning, or by using Silhouette's pick scan feature. We'll look at each one and talk about when they're appropriate. Before I talk about measuring, I want to state what I hope is obvious. Don't do any of this if you don't have to. In some cases, such as an acrylic blank, an accompanying cut file is already available. The key ring on my last slide is from Expressions Vinyl, for instance, and they sell SVGs to match their blanks. For simple geometric shapes like a round jewelry blank, all you need is a ruler. Once you have a measurement, then you just need to draw the shape using Silhouette Studio's drawing tools and resize it with the scale settings. This also works for complex shapes where you already have an accurate image that just needs sizing. While measuring is straightforward, I do want to mention two tools that I find indispensable in my die cutting lab. Digital calipers and a decimal ruler. I have 6 inch calipers from Harbor Freight that read in inches or millimeters to 3 decimal places or thousandths of an inch very easy to use and very accurate. One thing you may have noticed about Silhouette Studio and all your other cutting software is that measurements are in decimal inches. This means that when you use a standard ruler and measure something to be 3 16 inch for instance, you still have to convert that to a decimal. The easy solution to that is to use a ruler that is marked in tenths or hundredths of an inch instead of the usual eighths, sixteenths, and thirty seconds. Decimal rulers can be hard to find, but they are an inexpensive alternative to calipers. You can even download free printable ones online. If you have a scanner either built into your printer or a standalone, then you have perhaps the best tool for getting real size shapes. Scanners work well with simple geometrics or with complex shapes, really anything you can fit on your scanner's bed. Most people don't realize how easy this is, so let me run through it with you. For my examples, I'm using Shape Sticky Notes from Dollar Tree. Its puffy star shape works well for demonstration purposes. If your shape is dark, you can just lay it on the scanner bed and close the lid, which is white on the inside, and you will have plenty of contrast. My neon orange sticky notes work better against a dark background, so I stuck it to a piece of black paper first, then laid it face down on the glass. In Silhouette Studio, with the document open, I choose Scan from the File menu. The scanning panel opens on the right and under Source lists all available scanners. I only have one, so that's the default. If you have more than one, select the one that you put the blank in. Then click the Start Scan button. At this point, your scanner software will take over, so your screen won't necessarily look like mine. I've chosen black and white and 150 dpi, but your default settings will probably work fine for this. When the scanner is finished, the scan result will appear on your mat. The next step is to trace it. Since it's white on black, we'll trace by the process of elimination. Select the trace area, turn high pass off, and at the default threshold we can see that the star is surrounded by yellow. We are tracing everything but the star, which is what I mean by process of elimination. Click Trace. When I pull the original away, you can see that we have an unwanted frame around the star. This will always happen with a light on dark trace, but it's easy to remedy. The fastest way in this case would be to release compound path and pull out the star but I'll take this opportunity to show you another way to do this with Node Edit. Double click the outer rectangle, click on a node, and then click Delete Node multiple times until the rectangle unravels. I also see some little specks left over in there. I can select and delete with the Node tool. I guess it's time to clean my scanner glass. Okay, this is usually going to be very close to true size, but to be sure, I'm going to fill my trace with a color and send it to my printer making sure to print at 100% scale, not fit to page, borderless, or anything like that.
Then I can compare the printed shape with the sticky note and verify the size is correct. A lot of people think you have to use PicScan to get a true size image, but as you've just seen, this isn't true. You can certainly use PicScan for this though, and that's a good option if you don't have a scanner. PicScan works with all editions of Seal Studio, starting with 3.1.417 for the Cameo or Portrait Matte and 3.7.227 for the Curio Matte. There are many detailed tutorials about PicScan, but I'll walk through the specifics for this particular use. So I put one of the same sticky notes on my PicScan mat and snapped a picture with my phone, which I've already calibrated, and sent it to my computer. Click the PicScan button, and the PicScan panel opens on the right. Click Import from File, and then Import PicScan Image from File, and navigate to the picture you took. PicScan will whir for a while, then hopefully deliver your image to the mat. Since the PicScan mat is white, I don't have very good contrast. I could have put a scrap of black paper on the PicScan mat and put the sticky note on that, but I would have had to glue it down to keep it from flapping up and distorting the shape. So I opted for a trickier trace instead. Select the trace area, turn high pass off, and adjust threshold until you have the best yellow star possible. Click Trace and drag the original away. This time we will release Compound Path, click off of it, then drag the star away and delete all the extra pieces. PicScan has done its job, so we don't need our shape in the PicScan document anymore. I'll copy it to a new clean document, then, as with the scanner method, color the star, and print it to check for size. Both my scanner star and my PicScan star came out very close to actual size. But what if they didn't for some reason? Or what if I had created a shape from measurements and it wasn't just right? Or what if I needed a really, really accurate shape? I want to show you my easy, semi-systematic approach to speed the trial and error process. Let's say for my first printout, I determined that the star in my software was larger than actual sticky note, so I know it needs to be smaller, but by how much? I option drag on my Mac or alt drag in Windows to add a few copies of the first shape to the page. Then I use the scale panel to size these in increments of 0.5%. If I want to go even further, I can pick the two shapes that are closest and then make new shapes in 0.1% increments between those. Instead of printing, you could draw the shapes with a pen in your silhouette to check the accuracy. Ultimately, you're going to want to test your shapes by cutting from the media you'll be using in your project to filter out as many variables as possible. Once you've done all this work, you want to make sure you can take advantage of it without starting over. So be sure to take the winning shape and copy it to a new document and designate it as a master somehow. Make sure you back it up in more than one location and that you keep good notes on what your master files are named and what physical items they correspond with. This way you'll be able to use these files many times over without starting from scratch. I hope you've enjoyed this video and will give it a thumbs up, follow my channel, and my Clever Someday blog. Thanks so much for watching.